Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Gi FPV Fat Shark module. Now I have used this in the field, and I've gotten some pretty good range, just about the same range as my Furious FPV module, which means that the receiver sensitivity is spot on, and it's really great. Now for modules, they're actually using the RX 5808, which are the standard in most of the Fat Shark mod, the high-end Fat Shark modules that are out in the market right now. You know, such as the uh, FPV Furious Achilles one. We'll see those that in an upcoming video. I haven't done any real-world testing on that one, but this one I have, and I've hit the roughly the three kilometer range, and uh, I've actually hit a little bit more, 3.4. But the one that I got, I have found the recording of was the 2.94 kilometer range, which means that you know the receiver sensitivity is doing uh, great compared to my Furious FPV. It's almost spot on. However, today we're going to be taking a look at it, taking it apart, seeing the internal, seeing how basic or how advanced this thing possibly could be and also taking a look at the menu here and at the end i'll leave you guys with the footage of the flight to the three kilometer mark all right so that being said let's go ahead and crack this guy open before we go into the features here so it's just really easy and this is the older case now they're releasing it with a newer case that kind of looks like the rapid fire in a way so if you might see that looks different, it's just replacing this, I think, starting of January. So they probably already started. Took me some time to actually get this done. So to undo this, we have two screws here and a spacer. As you can tell, there's a spacer here and there's a spacer here, which has the screws that goes both ways. And we're just going to take out the bottom ones here. And let's just take a look. Hopefully we can see the microcontroller unit. I have a feeling it's... um. I don't think it's an STM32, which is kind of like, you know, the F1s and uh, F0s. I think it's just going to be... So I think the MCU is possibly like a um, Arduino, an Atmel-based CPU, not a STM32. So as you can tell here, to remove it, we just have to, we have these pins right here because these are what bypass or pass the information from the receiver to the uh, board up here. Now on the bottom here, it's pretty basic. All we get is like two capacitors and we get both of the modules because obviously this is diversity. And the amount of space between the antenna part of the module to the SMA is really good because uh, it's just really good. You want to see this area as short as possible. So that is a huge plus right out of the box here. And if we take a look here, they're using just a you know, basic OLED like all of the other Fat Truck modules do. But if we go in for a slightly closer inspection. Now, what I figured out is that they have not uh, broken out the SPI protocol. And what do I mean by that? Uh, usually every single module on the last three pins are the SPI to enable uh, something external to actually control the channels. However, they're basically unused. Those bottom three are really unused. So you won't be able to use the button on your fat shark in order to change channels. So keep that in mind. But that's not really a deal breaker. Not a lot of modules do that anyways. So they kept it pretty basic. But if we go in here, I think they're using the Texas instrument. This is a quad bilateral analog um, uh, IC, which means you can actually put four video inputs onto this chip here. But I, I can't really get access it because everything is under the screen here. And I'd have to desolder everything. And I kind of don't want to do that currently. But what I can see inside, I think it is an Atmel, which is uh, basically uh, like an Arduino based uh, microcontroller unit. So it's probably running around anywhere between 8 megahertz and 16 megahertz. And I'm also going to have to check the video analog IC here and see how fast its switching capabilities are. That's in terms of how fast, you know, the diversity can switch between each other. But, um, you know, most of them are almost just about identical, except the rapid fire is just that one's just out of this world. But that one's so fast that even some, you know, screens won't be able to understand it because it'll probably eat up some of the uh, uh, important signals in a video feed, such as, you know, the equalization pulses or the synchronization and all these types of things might get cut or disturbed. And some screens and some, you know, goggles, whatever, won't be able to actually read that. That's why they have something called legacy mode. I'm still waiting to get my hands on that rapid fire module to see how well it is. Now, in terms of, you know, what you want to look for in penetration is more of the uh, sensitivity than the diversity part. Now, it's really nice to switch really, really fast uh, if one antenna is picking up a little bit better than the other. But at the end of the day, it's all about the sensitivity. Now, the sensitivity is something very difficult to actually measure, but you can kind of get a better idea 
when you go take it out for a long range. When once you do the long range, you can see um, how good it is basically. So you can set up you know 200 milliwatts, see how far you can go, and see how far you can go with a different receiver. Then you know the uh, receiver sensitivity. Now we know the RX 5808 is a really good receiver. I don't know what else is good, but I know this one is really great because it's used on a lot of things. So that's a huge addition here. Now let's go ahead and jump into the menu and uh, take a look at some of its settings. So here I'm using the Furious FPV docking. I am in love with this thing. It is my go-to piece of hardware and I'm thinking of getting another one. And at the same time, I'm also thinking of creating the mod to enable you to daisy chain a couple together. But that's a whole different story. So let's go ahead and power this guy up. Now this, um, this module, the only thing I really don't like about it is the calibration sequence. The calibration sequence, there is nothing telling you how to calibrate this. There is no documentation. I, at least I couldn't find it. It was kind of a pain in the butt to get done. And right now, once you receive yours, it'll ask you to calibrate. And the calibration, you know, it's, it's not as um, intuitive as you might think. It's actually counterintuitive. So let's actually go here and I'm going to show you the process. That is the only thing I don't like about this uh, module here. Other than that, it performs really great. So I'm just going to calibrate it. It just says calibrating two, calibrate one, and then zero. So usually when you calibrate, it tells you to turn off your VTX and then turn on your VTX. And then so it could calibrate. Now we're going to get failed here. That's fine because I don't have anything on. And um, we get these default values, which are incorrect. You definitely want to calibrate in order to take advantage of its full performance and not have any hiccups in the field because, you know, uh, you don't want to. You don't want anything to go bad. So what I found the best way to do it is plug in your quadcopter. Make sure you're on the same channel that you are uh, you are going to be uh, powering up. So the best way I found to calibrate this is to turn on your quad, set it up to a channel, make sure you're on the same channel on the uh, on the module itself here. And then you want to go to settings and then we want to go to calibrate RSSI. Now check this out. Once I see count two or drop to one, I just turn off the quad. Usually that works, not always, but I'm hoping this time it'll work also. Let's, so let's just see here. It failed again. I don't know why. It's not really reliable in that perspective, but I actually had to sit here for a while to to do to actually calibrate it. So that is something really annoying. And um, but you only have to do that once. So after that, you're good to go in that perspective. Now, if we take a look at some of the settings, there's some crazy features here that are not found in other ones, but they can possibly be incorporated. Which is uh, let's check this out. You can, you, obviously, you can switch by frequency here. This is really nice. But if we go into the settings. What you can do is you can actually change, let me show you here, the divert, you could change the diversity speed, you can make it fast, super fast, you know, you got one through five. So this will change the speed of the switching of the, uh, the two, between the two uh, receivers that are built in. So that's really nice. This thing right here, the tune scale is pretty crazy. You can drop down to 125 kilohertz, you know, uh, in, in increments, you know, like basically, let's just say 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. So you can even get very specific because maybe, you know, this quadcopter is broadcasting at 59, uh, 57, 29.5. So you can actually even tune to that 0.5 and get even better signal, which is uh, something really nice. I haven't, I, I haven't seen that in any other uh, module just yet, if I remember correctly. I have, do have the Furious FPV module and uh, the Achilles. I don't think the Achilles can do that as well. So it's really nice. As you can tell here. We can go, you know, it's still on R3, you're a little bit less than R3, and then you hit R3 here. Um, and then now you're a little bit greater than B1. So you're somewhere in the middle between B1 and F1. So you can actually go by really nice increments. So that's something really nice if you want to get like specific into the channel that you want. We do have a favorites list and we have a favorite list here. We also have band scan mode, spectate mode. What this does is it scans all the channels that are active. And it'll allow you just with one button switch through those channels that it found. So you can just watch other people fly, which is something uh, it's a really nice feature. Um, and you have quad finder mode, which will work based on RSSI to find your quadcopter. RF analyzer, most of those have those. Um, and that's it. It's pretty basic. It works really great. It does have um, quite, I don't want to say a lot of features, but it's just it's something to be expected now. Fat Shark modules. There's nothing groundbreaking here. Um, it just works great. It has great sensitivity. Uh, it is rocking. It's, it is going for 50 bucks, but I think it should be a little bit less than 50 bucks. I don't know why it's so expensive. There is, um, it's very minimal inside, but um, it's, it's overall, it's a really great de device. Obviously, you're using great receivers here, and that's why the device here will perform. And they kept actually 
simple so they don't overcomplicate it and enable the receivers themselves or the yeah the receivers the rx5808 receivers inside to function correctly without any kind of overhead so overall it's a really good module it the sensitivity is absolutely great i did get pretty long range i got the same about about the same exact range as the furious fpv module if not they're basically identical and uh, I'll be doing a shootout in a long range uh, testing later on. I'll probably pick up a couple more of these dockings, get the perfect antennas, and just have them uh, battle it out and see who's going to win. Overall, it works really great. Uh, the sensitivity was great. That's what you want to look for. I mean, if I couldn't get that amount of range, then I wouldn't be here saying, I, I would just tell you it's not a really great one. But it's performing as good as a Furious FPV module, which is around 80 bucks. So that's something really nice out of this little module. That's it, guys. I'll have a link to everything down below. If you could check those out, it would greatly support the channel. And I'm going to leave you with the flight footage. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.